This little old town called Last Chance was a real wide open boomer in the good old days of the big gold strike. But about all that's left now is the dust blown on the winds of memory. Ever since I kicked the bucket, I've been haunting and struggling and wrestling round in this old Boot Hill Cemetery. You see, I was gold crazed. Live fast and loose, gamble, stole, lied, even claim jumped. But I got what I deserved. I was doomed to stay right here till I could do a good deed to offset the bad life I'd lived. And just three feet deeper right under me was a big tantalizing pocket of undiscovered gold. Yes, sir, that's me, Whirling Henry Thomas, and here's my story. Jock and Archie, my old partners, were still kicking around. Archie was a limey that should have been playing with a string of spools. But he loved gardening, and there wasn't a mean bone in his skinny old body. Jock was crazy about automobiles. I always figured the good Lord poured his brains in with a teaspoon, and somebody must have joggled his arm. <laughs> but his car, old Betsy, was his pride and joy. The third member of this Cockleburr outfit was a pup named Samson. And they was all tied together by gold. Of course, how that gold got in Samson's bed really comes later. Matter of fact, that's what the story's all about. Emily was the donkey engine for the gold digging machine, and Samson was the spark plug of the whole outfit. His first daily chore was turning on the alarm clock, which he did regular every morning. But the old rooster he was rousting out never bothered Jock and Archie. They figured they could stew him up any time they wanted to. Only one thing to do, get him up himself. Oh, Rattler. 
and Betsy was about the hardest to wake up of the whole bunch. But she always come around sooner or later. Then they'd get the donkey power lined up, and it was all aboard for the diggers. Come on, Samson. Naturally, the last one in was the head honcho, and when he give the wagons hold, the expedition moved out. Always left with a bang, too. Jock and Archie still followed the same old trail to our original diggers, where we busted our backs together for so many years. Naturally, Samson was the first one to get going. What with Social Security and pensions and welfare, together with their vegetable garden, to say nothing of a little gold from the old cranky mining machinery, they weren't really wanting for anything. It was a kind of pleasant, haphazard, do-what-you-like sort of life. And what Samson liked best was to oversee the whole shebang and get the wheels a-turning. and the borough working the old diggings was like money in the bank. But the minute them two old fools had enough to live on, they go traipsing around the countryside. They was wasting their lives in a vain search for that phantom mother load. What they needed was just to learn that gold and power and riches ain't nothing compared to just plain old-fashioned friendship like the three of them had already. If I could just pound that through their thick skulls, that'd sure be a good deed. And I'd be free at last. And I figured a way Samson could help me. First, I had to let him know there was a big strike close around. That way, I'd get the fever going wild. I located a feisty old critter and herded him around till he dug his hole right under me and into the gold. Well, when I had the badger all set, I called Samson. Hey, Samson, badger hole. Get the badger. Samson. Badger, dog coming. 
I knew Samson to be bound to get some of the dirt and gold flakes trapped in the natural oil of his coat, so his jock and Archie would find her later, and they wouldn't know where he got it. The more skirmishing and digging that went on, the better for my plan. Another long day, searching and prospecting, and no big strike. Leastways, not that Jock and Archie know about yet. But sooner or later, I'd get them. Look on it, Samson. Don't you know it's Sunday? Well, if Samson couldn't get those lazy humans to work him, he figured he'd at least go on out to the diggings and see that everything was all right. Samson was a good solid dog, just right for my plan. I mean, he could be counted on to do what you'd expect him to do, like protecting the diggings. I gotta admit, too, that sometimes I used to egg him on a little just for the fun of it. After all, there ain't too much excitement in being dead. Of course, I'd never get Samson in any real trouble, and I knew Jock and Archie would forgive him whatever he did anyhow. Okay, Samson. Get him, boy. That way. Like a lot of good watchdogs, he kind of enjoyed his work, and once he got started, it was so exciting and pleasurable, he just didn't know when to stop. That a boy, Samson. Now you got him moving. Stay with him. for town. Sunday was always Archie's garden day, peaceful and quiet for relaxing. Though it beat me what he was relaxing from. Sunday for Jock meant shining up Betsy till she put the prettiest dance hall girl west of the Pecos to shame. After all, he'd been going steady with her for quite a spell. He sure hoped that little desert dust devil would move on by and not stop in to fool around with his Betsy. Before Samson realized it, I'd got him right downtown. Yahoo! Look out, Archie! They couldn't hear me, but I wanted to stir them up. It's your old partner, Whirlin' Henry Thomas, gone to town like the good old days. <laughs> Hit him off! Hit him off! <laughs> Give him a feeling that something big was going on. Go on. Get him ready for the main event. Yahoo! Yippee! Wahoo! <laughs> Reminds me of the Calgary Stampede. Look out! Keep going! Oh. 
Samson figured he was already in the doghouse, so he might just as well make it for real. Samson was right about the doghouse, too, because those old coots had decided the stampede was his fault. And they'd punish him with short rations. It's bad for the digestion. Well, I guess I'll go check on Emily. I was about to give up hope they'd ever notice the gold. Then Saturday, a rare opportunity came along. I saw what was going on, I called Samson. Samson! Like all dogs, though, when he saw the fateful signs of soap and water, he took cover. Samson. Little did they know things was just about to bust wide open. All right, Samson. Here we go. Won't hurt a bit. It was a big sacrifice for Samson, but he couldn't help himself because phase one of my plan was now underway. Oops. Steady, old boy. Yeah. I've had my boss. <laughs> there, boy. All over for another week. <laughs> That'll wash out the dust. Now, that didn't hurt a bit, did it? Now in the tub. The tub, you ninnies. No. Archie. It can't be. There she was, coming right up, sparkling in the soapy water, just like the old grease flotation process I'd seen him use up in Alaska. <laughs> now I had him for sure. Never got to 
Saps the diggings? Good old Saps. He must have been rolling in the mother load to pick up a sampling like this. Of the richest pocket this side of Denver. We're rich! Or soon will be. Aha! Hi, lads. You'll be rich, all right. Not the way you think. How big a strike you figure it is? There's just no getting. Wait a minute. Go on, go on. More dust. Oh, bed's full of it. Well, that proves it. If he can pick up that much dust just rolling in it, it's got to be big. <laughs> Let's have a look at the map. Now, uh, yeah. we, uh, we prospected here last fall. But all we have to do is follow Samson. Sooner or later, he'll lead us right to it. Now, this is about as far as he usually wanders. Then right in here somewhere, think of it, there's a fortune waiting for you and me to come along and pick it up. <laughs> when Old Faithful sounded off the next morning, I figured we'd get a chance to see how the fever was taking hold. You'd never believe it, but Jock was out of bed before sunup. Samson was kind of bewildered, but he figured for sure Archie wouldn't rise to the occasion. But he was wrong again. Oh, there you are. Thought you were going to sleep the whole day away. Go on, boy. Eat your breakfast. And eat hearty. We've got a lot of work to do today. Samson was getting downright curious to see what strange thing might happen next. Come on, Samson. A minute wasted, a minute lost. Why, Archie actually seemed eager to crank up old Betsy. And on top of that, Jock was downright impatient with her. Stop complaining. Come on, Samson, let's go. It sure looked to Samson like they was a mite touch. But as far as I was concerned, things was moving right along. They had the gold fever, all right, and whatever bird brain plan they'd hatched up was bound to backfire. Uh -huh. Everything seemed to be going right along, same as usual, but a lot faster. It's easy to tell when someone is getting ready to do something he thinks is real smart, because there's a kind of sly, sneaky look comes over him. <laughs> Lunchtime, boy! Samson hadn't more than started to absorb that big breakfast, but if they wanted to eat some more, he'd be happy to oblige. I figured out their giant plan was nothing more than trying to hurry things up so they could follow Samson. As usual, he went right off to check on the badger, and my plan almost came to ruin right there because if they found the big strike too soon, the gold fever wouldn't have time to drive them wild. But I didn't need to worry. I was too dumb to realize their plan had already worked. And they was now within spitting distance of the gold. Now, we know there's no gold there. They'd have found it long ago, digging the cemetery. You're right. Let's call him, get him on the trail again, eh? Might as well. Come on, boy. Samson. Samson. Here. Come on. 
Samson was smarter than Jock and Archie put together. And he sensed they didn't want him to stay there. So he decided to lead him to his next favorite stopping place. I'll be doing I think he's trying to tell us something. But... By Jove, you're right. Come on. Come on, Emily. Let's go. It was a hot country mile out into the desert, but if they wanted to go, he'd be proud to show them the way. You know, we should have brought your car. Oh, no. It's too rugged over on this side of the river for my car. Samson. Come on. Hey, look! Samson knew for sure they was touched. Imagine not getting excited over a treasure like that. I swear I haven't worked so hard in 30 years. I thought you figured we walked, aren't you? <laughs> Samson kept right on doing his best to take care of things, like keeping the invading vomits under control. But as the gold fever worked more and more, Chuck and Archie lost all interest in their old life. Besides, they was always worn out from the endless tramping around. Things were starting to go to pot just the way I knew they would. didn't do any good because Jock and Archie only had one thing on their minds, gold. Just the same, Samson wasn't about to give up his life work. Some of the bigger desert rustlers were beginning to hear about the free lunch, like this Quati, whose specialty was eggs. who answered the alarm. He stuck to his job like a riverboat gambler to a rich greenhorn. 
Even if the rest of the crew had forgotten theirs. What's going on out there? Samson chasing a quaddy out of the hen house. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, right through your garden. Oh, no, not that. <laughs> well, the gold hadn't quite replaced Archie's garden yet, but sooner or later it sure would. It might be here. Right here in town. Uh-uh. They would have found it long ago. Not necessary. Not if they built the town right smack on top of it. It's possible. Samson's in and under every building in town. No. Nah. Jack. Bloody thing. Well, they're still the inside, Flora. <coughs> no, it's a waste of time. There can't be anything there. Yeah. Of course, there's still the bank and the general store. And the garden. Remember Samson chasing the quaddy? Dig up my garden. Not here either. Let's try the vegetable garden. I'm tired. Oh, come on, so am I. But you want to get rich, don't you? I'd got Jock and Archie really going good now. And while they was tearing up the town, I decided to hit them again. So I got my gold dust twins together. Saturday was coming up, and I calculated one more golden bath would cinch the whole deal. It's gold, and more than before. It can't be. Samson must have led you straight to it. Me? Oh, no. It was you that missed it. You're not blaming it on me. now and nothing was too crazy anymore. They was really on fire to get their hands on that big bonanza. Well, I guess we can scratch this area off the map. Day after day, they kept at it, tramping and trudging all over creation, working further and further away from home all the time. By now, I had them so befuddled, I was pretty sure my plan was going to work. And old Jacques sure proved it right there at the Badger Hole. Come on, Samson. She was still muddling around in town, but there just wasn't much left to tear up. By now, the days was beginning to run into weeks, and they was both plum loco. Worn out and kind of delirious, dreaming of the riches they was gonna have. of their real bread and butter was all but forgotten. Archie's old noggin was a whirling too, with rare and exotic blooms, while his real garden was dried up and gone to seed and weeds. 
there just wasn't anything left for loyal old Samson to protect. It isn't any such thing. No, I did the cooking last night. No, you did not. Furthermore, you've done precious little of anything else around here lately, except polish that old wreck you call a car. Huh? I haven't laid a hand on Betsy in over a week. Now, you're just all upset because we messed up your garden. A mite. A mite? You call that a mite? Even though their comfortable kind of life had disappeared and they'd fallen to fighting and squabbling, they wouldn't give up. My gold was like a magnet drawing everything to it and wiping out good sense. That last one day, Archie got so far out into no man's land, the opportunity had come for the final roundup of my plan. It's dangers like earthquakes and floods and hurricanes and such that brings out the good side of folks and bands them together to help each other. So the final topic to my good deed was to stir up a kind of small disaster to see if it wouldn't bring Jock and Archie to their senses so as they'd learn their lesson and I'd be free. Now, a hurricane was kind of beyond me. But I did figure to stir me up a pretty good little desert windstorm. Hello, Samson. <laughs> well, you've led us a merry chase. Come on, boy. Time to go home. Yeah. Jock worried. actually took his shiny pride and joy out into that grinding sandstorm, I knew all my planning and scheming hadn't been wasted.
see. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Well, I guess ain't either one of us been too cordial the last couple of days. And I've been thinking, you know, this gold business has caused us nothing but trouble. Know what you say. Let's forget the gold. We get all we want from the old workings anyway. Right. My plan had worked, and they'd learned the lesson I wanted them to. Even Samson knew things was going to be all right again. Well, I thought I'd just see him home, and then I'd be on my way. Uh-oh. My storm had done more than I counted on. Look there. It had uncovered some of the gold, and right at the last, it looked as though greed might undo all my good work, then I'd never be free. Look at that. This must be it. This is what we've been looking for. It's a bonanza. It must go all the way under the cemetery. Poor old Henry. Spent a whole lifetime looking for the big one. And here he is, laid to rest, right smack in the middle of it. Those were the good old days. Somehow it doesn't seem right to disturb him. You're right. Come on, let's get on home. 
We'll just cover her up again. And nobody will ever know. Right. And if we ever do need it, Henry won't mind. Now, just a doggone minute, you dry gulch and claim jumpers. It was me that really found it. Even if I was dead. <laughs> there I go, seeing all that gold again. I got carried away. But Samson and Jock and Archie came through with flying colors. And now, at last, with my good deed done and everything back to normal. No, Samson. I'll finally be on my way to that great gold mine in the sky. Always remember that love and friendship are the real thing. But a little gold doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs>